that are close to me and my family, you know that we've been seeing such an intense fight, an intense battle that's been going on. It's like every single day, it's something different from the car to the house to the job to health. Every single one of my family members has gone through some type of physical ailment over this past week. However, what we've seen during this past week, right at the very moment that something happens that the enemy tries to oppress us, we've seen an awesome God step in and bring deliverance, bring healing, and bring restoration, and bring provision. Maybe you can't attest to that fact, but if anyone in this place this morning can say that God is a mighty God, I want you to open your mouth right now and declare what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Come on. Say, say what a mighty God we serve. 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 Thank you, Lord. Oh, we find everything we need in you. We find everything we need in you. All that we need, all that we desire is found in you. Is found in you. Come on, just open your mouth in this place right now. Come on. He's worthy of it. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't care what's happening on the outside. Our God is worthy of praise. He's worthy of adoration. He's worthy of worship. He's worthy of love. We love you, Jesus. It's your name, God. For you are awesome, Lord. You are deliverer, God. You are provider, Lord. You are healer. You are magnificent, Lord. You are holy. You are righteous. You are master. You are savior. You are the very king of all creation. Hallelujah. We find all that we need in you, God. We find everything that we need inside of you. For you are El Shaddai. You are the God of more than enough. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are God our banner. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are God our peace. Hallelujah. God our provider. Jehovah Shalom. And the great prince of peace. Hallelujah. Said in him do I live, move and have my being. In him do I live, move and have my being. Said in him do I live, move and have my being. In him yeah. do I live, move Come on. and have Sing it again. Come on. my being. Said in him do I live. Do I live, move in? 
without you, Lord. I'm nothing without you, Lord. Oh, I can't you, Lord. even speak without you, Lord. I'm nothing oh, without you, Lord. I can't you, Lord. even move without you, Lord. I'm nothing oh, without you, Lord. I can't you, Lord. even move without you, Lord. I'm nothing without you, Lord.
to this morning, there was a, a message that the Lord kept speaking to me about. And it was about worship. And I, I wasn't planning on preaching on uh, singing or praise this morning. But there was this thing that the Lord kept telling me last night and this morning. And, and now I, under, I really understand. And well, you guys have been blessing me today, all of you, because uh, you've been working that sermon out in my head. I've actually been able to do it. Two things. Ready? The first was uh, the fact that praise is a decision. Yes. You either decide to praise or you don't. Amen. 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 Look at someone say it's your choice. choice. Now, 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 God, God wants the praise from us. As a matter of fact, in scripture, he commands it from his people. Come on, amen, somebody? Amen. But ultimately, it's your choice. Praise, praise also is always expressive. Yes. Look at someone say, it's expressed. It's expressed. Yeah, you can't meditate on praise. That's, right. That's not praise. That's right. Praise infers that you're expressing it somehow. Uh, so clapping, singing, spinning, dancing, shouting, lifting up hands. Something that you're doing is giving praise. Here's the second thing. Together with that, the Lord had me go to the scripture where the priests are serving at the altar someone say serving at the altar i've said this to you before that the word serving is the word liturgia there where we get the word in english liturgy it's work someone say it's work liturgy in our in our western world we use it to talk about worship every church has a liturgy worship but but it's work in the bible oh boy i said worship is what Work. It's work based. It, you got to work. So the, the altar work that they did, that was all liturgy to them. That, that, that was worship to the Lord. This morning, this morning, I was thinking just on my drive in. I wonder how many people are going to come with a work ethic for praise. Come on. Amen. Somebody. So look at somebody and tell them it's your choice. You can put in the work. It's your choice. But God is worthy of it. How many say amen? He really is worthy of it. So if, if, you, if you decide to do it with us, just I want him to sing it just two or three more times. Just throw your hands up. And, and even while we're saying he breathed in me and lived through me, I mean, uh, it's amazing because it is, it is all God working through us. Somebody say amen. So even as you're working, you're breathing in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Come on, just sing that one. Just a couple more Put the work in. Come on, somebody. Yeah. In me. Yeah. Come on. Say, breathe for me. Without 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Can I let you in on a little secret? Just do that. I gotta let you in. My wife doesn't even know this. church, I think a shaft in worship. <laughs> With a long leather coat on, I just think of lost in the presence of the Lord. That's all I think. Alright, that's all I had to say. Amen. Good morning, CIC. Come on, if you love Jesus, clap your hands for him. Hallelujah. <laughs> what you say? Say. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> I always just, and then after the remake of the movie, I always see this guy in worship. What's his name? What's his name, the actor? Samuel Jackson, that's what I see in worship. With a potty mouth and everything. Hallelujah. God is good. He is able to do it. Amen. Not the makeshaft worship, but amen. Praise God. It's good to see you all here this morning. I'm so excited to see the Smith family here, Apostle Carlton Smith, Luanda Smith. Come on, can we thank God? That's Mike's parents. He was just singing. With his mom and dad are there if you don't know them. Amen. And I walked back and saw him in his shorts. I was like, yes, you are in Florida. Hallelujah. Came out the cold. Hallelujah. Amen. You glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you to open your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4. It's offering time. Amen. And uh, we are accustomed to taking uh, a few minutes in the scriptures here so that we would have a proper motivation and give and understand the promises of God. Not give out of compulsion. Not give out of necessity. Because we have to or we feel like we're pressured to. Um, but give out of joy. Amen give with understanding, give with faith and hope, trusting the Lord. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, this word came to me on Friday. Um, I was like, who do you want me to say this to, Lord? And it just came on Saturday. I said, who do you want me to say it to, Lord? It came to me this morning. The Lord said, say it at church. Amen? 2 Kings chapter 4, I'll read from the New Living Translation. It's a very popular uh, story about the prophet Elisha. One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatened to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you, Elisha asked. Tell me what do you have in your house, in the house. Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Say it with me. She did as she was told. That's really all you have to do to, to find miracles happening in your life. Amen, someone. Just do as you're told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. 
soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one, her, one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on whatever is left over. How many believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think? Come on, amen, somebody. He's just able to do it. I want to just share this. Uh, I don't want to exegete anything. You, you heard the story. It's really simple. She has a need. The prophet tells her what to do. She obeys. God supplies. That's the point. Amen, somebody. Uh, also, she got leftovers. Amen. That is, when the Lord blesses you, use it for what it was intended for. Come on, amen. Raise your hand if you ever used it for something else. And we're like, oh, I should obey God. Yeah, it happens too. She used it. She paid her debts, lived off the rest of it. Um, I was thinking about this, and I'm, I'm not going to be long, just, just another two minutes. I was thinking about this um, the other day. This is what came to my mind with the scripture. And it was uh, when the Lord spoke to my wife and I and told us to leave Cleveland and move to Florida. I said, all right, Lord, well, we'll do that. And in my mind, I had a, a nine-month plan in place. Uh, a nine-month plan. How many months? Nine-month plan in place. I was here six weeks later. And what happened was that the Lord uh, just moved in such a way that he, everything I was planning to do in nine months, he just bumped it up a little bit, right? six weeks. And it wasn't a time of abundance for my wife and I. That's the part I want to get to. It was not the best economic time for us to make a decision to move. Uh, it takes a few thousand dollars to come from there to here. To pack up your house, pack up your children, come on. You get the truck, move on down, the whole adjustment, get your utilities cut on and do everything you have to do. And then, and then it takes money. You need money to even get adjusted because you're not sure what's going to happen. How many understand that? But I, I said, well, Lord, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some money. And also, I'm not going to leave and leave my bills unpaid in Ohio. I'm going to have to zero everything out and then come because we're not going to leave a trail behind us. Amen. And so I said, well, this is, do you remember the exact amount it was? It was a lot of money. What I know is this. Yeah, it was 8000 that we needed just to make the move without taking care of everything else. And I said, well, Lord, what are we going to, I said, well, Lord, if you could just at least give me uh, eight to $10,000, I'll be all right. Now it's Christmas time. The Lord spoke to us in the holiday season. He spoke to us right before Thanksgiving. Well, do you know between Thanksgiving and New Year's, people are busy with their money? This ain't the time to be asking folk for help. Or, or, and I said, Lord, what are we going to do? And, I, uh, and the other thing is that at the end of the year, I take two weeks off with my family. So I don't go out to preach. I don't go do anything. I'm not... So I live off of preaching, so that's, that's no income those two weeks. So I said, what's going to happen, Lord? You know, we got to do this thing. And I just want to say this. One by one, the Lord started to move things and make it happen. Can I tell you that not only did he give us the $8,000, one person cut me a check for 5000 all by themselves. I didn't ask him for money either. Come on, somebody say amen. Uh, when, when it all got through with it by... By the first week here in Florida, $15,000 had come into my hands. Come on, say amen, somebody. Almost double the amount of what I had asked the Lord for. So what ended up happening was we ended up buying furniture. I didn't even pray about the furniture. We had money to purchase furniture and to do some things. Here's my point to you. When the Lord spoke to us, we obeyed. When the Lord spoke to us, we what? Obey. obey. You obey and you start moving and let's just watch God do what he's going to do. I can't get any simpler. It can't just, I can't be more elaborate than that. It's as simple as that. You obey, you do what God is saying to do, and you watch God do the rest. Somebody say amen. 
I also have testimonies where I didn't have the 15 grand, where I actually had 7,999. But woof, we made it. How many got those stories too? Somehow it didn't work out the way you wanted, but here you are today. I say, here you are today. Here you are today. Here you are today. That means the Lord brought you all the way this way. Somebody say amen. I don't know who this is for, but just everyone, would you lift your hands? I want to pray over, over, over you. I want to pray for you that your faith would come alive, that you would not shrink back, that you would believe God and obey him and boldly step out and do the thing God is saying to do. I don't know who it's for, but Father, in Jesus' name, whoever you intended to hear this word, help them understand God. Not to fear, not to look at the circumstances, not to look at what they don't have, but to simply say yes to you, God. And as they say yes to you, God, I pray, God, that you send a deluge of, of, of blessings into their life, God. That you fill every jar they can put out there, even so much, God, so that they can sell, pay off their debts, and have enough to live off of. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for a divine intervention in the life of my brother and sister. I pray right now in Jesus' name for supernatural supply and for their faith. They would not fear step out in obedience and say yes to your will yes to what you're saying and follow instructions as you lay out step by step what they are to do in, the in Jesus name amen a lot of times we want to find out how to get to step 10 but we haven't taken step 1, 2 and 3 yet take step 1, 2 and 3 and then let the next steps present themselves amen someone she did what the prophet said and from that moment on step by step God began to supply everything. isn't it God is just faithful he's just amazing he's a good God I lost my fear for material things a long time ago years ago years and years ago um, I even lost my fear for bankruptcy I lost my fear for going through I just decided a long time ago, I'm going to live for Jesus. And he's just going to take care of me all the way through. I don't fear the worst, and I don't fear the best. Come on, amen, somebody. Just got to step out and do what God is saying. And God has been faithful every year of my life. Amen, someone. My entire life, he's been faithful. I've never seen the righteous, what? Forsaken or his seed. Beg for bread. That's what the psalmist said. If you need an offering envelope, would you raise your hand, please? Let's, let's be obedient to the Lord and let's worship Him too in our giving. Amen. If you need one, just raise it high enough so they can see our youth are working today. Look at our youth working today. Amen. And just, uh, thank God for them. If you feel the Lord leading you to give someone two envelopes, no, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Let the Lord use you, young people. Look at our youth working. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the tithers in the house, we're going to ask you to come first. I'll ask you, if this is your week where you're received income, you're going to tithe to God. Come on, bring it. Bring your tithe to the Lord. Just stand here at the altar. Let's pray together. And then all the rest of us are going to follow suit. And we're going to bring our gifts to God. Is online to cicorlando.org you can give there amen would everyone stand with me at this time please everyone standing if you have gone through a financial tough week you should be standing first you should be standing first and say yes lord that's for me I believe in miracles amen amen Hallelujah. Would you lift your gifts to the Lord all over the building? Just lift your gift to the Lord. If you need to use your credit or debit card to give, after we pray, you can go right into the narthex there and someone will be there to swipe your card if you want to do that, if you don't want to fill it out on that. 
Father, we thank you. The baby's ready. Father, we thank you.